The few images that have been released so far suggest it could boost significantly the PLA's ability to strike targets from a long range. China's newest airborne early warning and control AEWNC aircraft, the KJ-3000 could be key to the People's Liberation Army's ability to deliver lethal strikes from ultra-long ranges. Its design is based on a modified version of the country's long-serving transport plane the Y-20B, and its most distinctive addition is a radar dome on top of the fuselage that hides an array of advanced equipment. China is trying to rapidly grow its fleet of airborne information command centers with at least three new models in the pipeline, the lightweight shipborne KJ-600, the medium-sized KJ-700, and the largest and most advanced KJ-3000. Based on the Forjet Y-20 cargo plane, the KJ-3000 is part of a fast-expanding and diversifying fleet of Chinese airborne early warning and control aircraft, which also includes multiple iterations based on the four turboprop Y-9 series of airlifters. The KJ-3000 is just one of the latest expressions of a massive investment in this area. As well as fielding an armada of EWNC assets that is significantly larger than that of the US Air Force, China is increasingly looking toward these assets as a key means of defending its interests as well as for pushing its combined aerial capabilities out further into the Indo-Pacific. The latest imagery shows the KJ-3000 on the ground at an undisclosed airfield in China. The aircraft still wears a coat of primer, and the serial number 7821 is clearly visible on the forward fuselage as far as is known, this is the only example completed so far. Although the aircraft is partially obscured, we can see the characteristic large circular radome on top of the rear fuselage. The KJ-3000 is also fitted with an aerial refueling probe mounted above the cockpit, and there is a prominent series of antennas arranged on top of the forward fuselage. Compared to the Y-20, the aircraft also features a very prominent intake at the base of the tailfin, likely a ram air inlet to cool the extensive onboard electronics. The KJ-3000 has long been seen as the solution to meet China's requirement for a platform to supplement the KJ-2000 mainring, which is, to date, its largest dedicated AEWNC aircraft. The KJ-2000 is based on the Eliashin IL-76MD Candid, another four-jet airlifter. Originally planned to be equipped with Israeli mission systems, this plan was derailed under pressure from the Clinton administration. Instead, the KJ-2000 was fitted with Chinese-developed systems, installed on 4X China United Airlines IL-76MD aircraft. The KJ-2000's active electronically scanned array ESA radar comprises three antennas in a triangular configuration within a fixed radome. The four KJ-2000s were declared operational in 2007 and are based in Jiangsu province, facing key adversaries Japan and Taiwan. Regardless of the operational effectiveness of the KJ-2000, China was only able to produce more of these aircraft due to the strictly limited number of Russian-built IL-76MDs available for conversion. As a result, the Y-20 was quickly earmarked as a likely platform for a follow-on to the KJ-2000 and this program seems to have gained momentum once the definitive Y-20B transport became available in 2020. The Y-20B is powered by the domestically produced WS-20 high-bypass turbofan engine, which is a significant advance over the Russian D-30KP-2 engine found on the original Y-20A. The KJ-3000 is not the first development of the Y-20 for the People's Liberation Air Force, another being the YY-20A aerial refueling tanker, which is also now in service. With such a small fleet of KJ-2000s available, and with these airframes tied to supply chains in Russia, maintenance and support cannot be straightforward, and these issues will only become more problematic as the aircraft gets older. With that in mind, the opportunity to introduce a potentially much larger fleet of KJ-3000s is a very big deal for the PLA Air Force, especially since it will also be more advanced than its predecessor. Once in service, the KJ-3000 will be easier to upgrade and, very importantly, it will be available for potential export. Pakistan, which already operates Chinese-supplied radar planes and which may well have used them to significant effect in its recent conflict with India, could be one country with an interest in buying them. Unclear is the degree to which the KJ-3000 may offer capabilities beyond those found in the KJ-2000, although this would appear to be a given, with the main ring having made its maiden flight more than 20 years ago. As it is, the radar of the KJ-2000 is said to have a maximum range of almost 300 miles, and it's reportedly able to track hundreds of aerial targets simultaneously. 
Imagery available so far suggests that the KJ-3000 may use a radar array with two, rather than three antennas, although this cannot be confirmed at this point. The KJ-3000, with its efficient engines and in-flight refueling capability, should offer plenty of advantages in terms of range and on-station time. Chinese efforts to add aerial refueling capabilities to its AEWNC fleet are something that is referenced in the latest Pentagon report to Congress on China's military, released late last year. The KJ-3000 almost certainly has other intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities beyond just its radar, as well. At least as important is its likely function as a networking node, reflecting a growing area of interest for the Chinese military in general, and something that is especially valuable over the long distances in the Indo-Pacific theater. Uniquely, China is currently pursuing a multi-track approach to expanding its AEWNC fleet. As well as the heavyweight KJ-3000, there's a growing fleet of radar planes based on the smaller Y-9 transport. The latest of these is the KJ-700, which we discussed recently, and that is likely a multi-intelligence aircraft, combining both airborne radar as well as an array of electro-optical and infrared sensors, likely intended to track targets across air, sea, and potentially land domains. The turboprop-powered KJ-700 joins the KJ-200 and KJ-500 series. As we have discussed before, these smaller types of turboprop-powered AEWNC platforms are especially well-suited to operations from more dispersed and even austere bases. As such, these mid-size radar planes regularly appear at some of China's island outposts, as well as operating routinely in the highly strategic Taiwan Strait. While we don't know for sure what kind of radar and other mission systems the KJ-3000 might be fitted with, its continued development is very significant as part of China's developing AEWNC capabilities. At the very least, a larger jet-powered airframe should be an important complement to the country's smaller but increasingly capable turboprop AEWNC platforms.